Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Uh, we're kind of cruising into the dog days of summer right now, also known as the mosquito days of summer. Uh, you can clear those little suckers out of your yard for good, though, or just for a one-time event if need be, because Southeast Termite and Pest Control have treatment options of all types. Uh, you give them a call, they can step you through the entire process. Also, ants, they're out right now. They take care of those. And, of course, if you wind up with some critter in your house or in your property that you weren't expecting and don't want there, they have a wildlife division you can call as well. Been doing it since 1971. Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Okay, 10 game season, all SEC games. Throw in all the possible starts and stops and missing players and unknowns. What constitutes a good season this year? What do you call a good year? John, Assuming almost, they play all 10. Yeah, I almost have to go team by team. So, well, that's no fun. <laughs> so, if, if, if Alabama doesn't go 9 and 1, then they're going to say that was a bad year. Uh, if I were to focus on Tennessee, I, I would say a good year for Tennessee. I uh, can't wait till Twitter fires me up on It's six and four. I think six and four is a good year with the schedule. Now, we don't know the other two teams in the West. True. Could be Ole Miss, could be LSU, which are the two future opponents. I'm hearing more talk about perhaps Auburn. Uh, Texas a and is a possibility because there's such a large gap between when Tennessee plays A&M, I think twice in a 12-year period. I would say for Tennessee, I'd go six and four. Well, All right, Chuck, where are you? What's a good year? Well, if you, if you look at it, if you start with what you went last year, didn't you go five and three in the SEC? Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you can improve on that, then to me that would be, with all of this stuff going on, all of the unknowns, and even assuming you play all of those games, which I don't think most of us think is going to happen anyway, but I wrote down six and four. Well, the other interesting thing, I mean, it's going to be hard to uh, project anything or, or to evaluate anything until you see, did Tennessee have all of its quarterbacks for this week? Did Alabama have all of its right. quarterbacks when they played mm -hmm. Tennessee? That kind of stuff's going to weigh into it. But I do think it's interesting, and that's, that's good perspective, that five and three last year, so can you improve on that uh, in terms of percentage? If your percentage stays about the same, you're looking six and four. You're about the same as what you were last year. Right. Which and I, I, actually, I think I should. think that's better, actually, six and four to five and three. I do, given the schedule, because you're crossing over right. against some West teams yeah, that and I think will be which pretty is a tougher good. division. And yeah. here, here's one thing: what if one of your games that is say canceled, you don't even make it up, is against a team you feel like you had a pretty good chance of beating? You know, you lose a, a win pretty much, and then you play all of the ones that are tough. So I mean, there's there's so many so many variables in there. To, to try and factor in right now. It will be interesting from a fan perspective what is and what isn't acceptable this year. And we're, we've got another segment on this coming up a little later, but I, I do wonder what the reaction is going to be because it's so out of the ordinary. In typical fashion, you know, you get mad over every loss, but there are so many extenuating circumstances. Are people going to be more realistic? That's like you, you've, I think you've touched on it, John. Just give us football. You know, I, 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 this is like a year to help us. Let's just get through this. Let's just get by this and, and get some answers we need. And then 2021 has to be better. I, I think a lot of programs will get mulligans. But you're not going to get a mulligan if you hit your first three tee shots out of bounds, okay? Right. If you're, if you're Alabama and you go five and five, well, no. forget saving safe. Let's take somebody else. If you're South Carolina and Miss and, and Will Muschamp, you go two and eight, you ain't getting a mulligan. Right. If you're Tennessee and you're four and six, there's gonna be a lot of unhappy people. So I think if you have a, either a great year or a really bad year, I think that could have an impact on the way people look at it. Otherwise, if you're right in the middle or close to what people projected, I think you get a mulligan. I would argue that even if Will Muschamp goes two and eight, he's still safe. There's nobody million the money for the buyer. Yeah, for the buyer. <laughs> he might very well be. <laughs> but, but you'd be on the hottest of hot seats the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, how will the SEC divvy up its, the additional games? That's what we've been talking about. What's the best path to take? Just add in the next two in the rotation or do it by strength of schedule? And how would that impact Tennessee? Come on back.